Before I preach another sermon, I have to continue with what I set out to start in the beginning. And that is to finish what God instructed me to do. Many people, if I had to ask you, and I said to you, give me, give me a definition of what power is. And I can guarantee you that there would be a myriad of interpretations, opinions of what power is and what it is not. Some of you would say to me, the person with the most money is the most powerful in this universe. The person that wields the greatest authority is the one who is more powerful than anything. And then I say to you, you haven't got a clue. You have not got a clue. You see, science says that I need to perform an experiment to make it a scientific fact. And I need to do that same experiment over and over and repeat it over and over for it to be a scientific fact for everybody to accept. And then they say that for science to prove that there is no God is something of a fact. And I say to you, that is where you have completely, completely thrown all your th laws out the bucket. You've thrown them into the wind. Because I watched the program that said this. We will prove that there is no God. Yet scientists themselves admit the very existence of God through their own ignorance. Because God says, he, in the Bible it says, God laughs. Do you know why? Because the closer you get, the further you are from the truth. There is no scientific fact. I can't scientifically prove to you why miracles work. But I see them over, repeated over and over and over. But yet science completely dissolves themselves from that. They say that is not scientific fact. And this preacher, as I stand, am a scientific fact that miracles work. I should not be alive. You see, they destroyed this body. And God, and God is the only one keeping this body functioning and moving. And as long as He does His part, I will do my part. And I will ensure that I must exercise this body and that I must eat the right things and I must watch what I put into this body. Many years ago when I started out as a preacher, as a man of God, you see, if you take a castle wall and that castle wall is 10 meters thick and God stands on the other side and you stand on this side. For me to say, I hear the voice of God. That just doesn't work. You see, God said, in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon my people. But yet when you look around... And you see preachers preaching dead sermons and there is no life in them. 
then I have to ask, why, sir? Why is that? You see, I have to remove that wall. I have to take it away. And as we approach Easter, it is a time to reflect back to the cross of Calvary and to see what Christ has done for you, sir. To save your soul, sir. So that He can pour out His Spirit upon you, sir. And anoint you and give you the power that only God has. You see, when Jesus hung on the cross, God has never covered up the scars of human life that which you go through each and every day, each and every moment. God doesn't take those scars away. The scars inside this body are not removed. Some miracles happen, yes. But there is a way and an order in which those miracles will occur. When Jesus hung on the cross, there were two people on each side of his arms and his hands outstretched for the world to see how far he will go, how far he will stretch to give you the, the gift of salvation. You see, the one man reached out and said, Lord, remember me on this day. And God said, this day you will be with me in paradise. Only he didn't go then. Because Jesus wasn't there. Till later. On the other side. And they're representing the multitudes of people that curse and mock God. And say he doesn't exist. And there is no God. God's hand is outstretched for eternity. And his scars are there for all eternity. For you to see that his hand was never too short for you, sir. And his feet, as his feet were nailed. They were planted firmly in the ground of the earth. To signify something. That that body was earthly bound and it was bound for a lost eternity his head pointing towards heaven because that is where his soul and his body and his mind would eventually go you see this is only a mere body made up of flesh and blood but the spirit of God He's eternal. You see, science says this. There is a force stretched across this entire universe that is so awesome and so great and so magnified. And it's holding everything together. Everything is held together by this force. But we... Do not know what it is. And then I can tell you who it is. Because according to this book. This book. It says that earth is the footstool of God. And the heavens are his resting chair. Everything has an answer. Everything has an answer. Everything that you need to know is contained in this book. Preachers don't know. Preachers don't know because they don't seek the answer in the right place, sir. When God says in the end times when he will come and take his people back, he says, I rip my people from the shepherds. Why from the shepherds? Because the shepherds are misleading the sheep of God. They are misleading you. Where in the Bible, the entire Bible, 
Does it ever say, God abandoned you? God's not talking to you. God is finished with you. That he's standing back and he's watching how things take place. There is not one word in that book that says that. Not one word. And I'll tell you a short story of what happened. You see, God is the only one. The only one that will save your soul. God heals. God delivers. God saves that man from suicide. That woman that has had enough with life. He saves them. He saves them. Not one doctor can save somebody from suicide. Not one tablet will save a man from suicide. It may help for a time, but it doesn't solve the problem. I can't explain to you scientifically. I cannot tell you why. This preacher, in the middle of a meeting, got up and I said, there is a man, there is a man, and God, he's calling that man to the altar. He is saying, come, come, come. And as the congregation got weary and got agitated, and they began to look at me funny, and they were saying, nobody's getting up, nobody's moving. Let me tell you something, sir. The longer I stood there, the firmer my, foot, my footing in the ground became because the man that hung on the cross was talking through this body and he was saying, Son, stand your ground. Do not move, but stand your ground. Fifteen minutes passed. Fifteen minutes went by. And then from the outside of the church, a man walked to the front of the church. And as I saw him walk through those doors, and I will see it for all eternity, as he came down the aisle, the Lord said, there a man is, here he is. And as he stood in front of me, and I prayed for him, instantly that man was delivered, free, and then he got up afterwards and said, let me give you my testimony. Let me tell you what happened. And he said this. Three blocks away, I was at the edge of the roadway. And I was about to step in front of a truck. Because my life had been finished. I had seen no more sense in living. I've had it. I've had it with this life. I've had enough. And he said as he walked towards the edge of the curb. And he was about to step out. He called out. God help me. And instantly. God spoke to the man. He said. I heard his voice. I heard him say stop. And in broad daylight. Broad daylight, the sun shining, not a cloud in the sky. He said, I saw this beam of light. He said, I cannot describe it, but it was brighter than the sun. And it followed, and I just followed it as this voice kept on calling me. And it went down this road, and then it went that way, and then it went that way. And I followed it for 15 minutes, sir, until I saw your church. And I walked in through these doors. You tell me what Christ has done for you. No man has such power. No man possesses such power. No preacher possesses such power. Let me tell you, you don't possess that power. You see, when Jesus said, it is finished, it was finished because he took that very authority back and ripped it back and put it back in the heart of God. And he said, no longer will man.
be able to be in control. God is the only one who stays in control. I can show you many a preacher that has fallen by the wayside. Many of them. You know why? Because of the wall that is between them and God. They allow that wall instead of to get narrower and narrower and narrower. They allow it to go wider and wider because they allow these eyes to watch the things that God said don't. As a preacher then, I've backslidden, I've fallen. One man, one man. And God brought me back. I can tell you countless times, countless times of where I should have died. But God put his hand down and he said, I will not let you go. And each time I would fall on my knees and repent and say, Lord, take me back. And each time, each time, he would take me back and take me back and lead me on. As I landed in India and I preached throughout India, some small places. But you know what? It doesn't matter. The numbers don't count. It is the individual that he sees. God, if God does not see the individual, then I am not preaching the right message. You see from the King of England, right down, right down, to the beggar on the sidewalk, to the prostitute, to the criminal, this book, this Bible reaches right across because it's outstretched. You say, I cannot come to God. I cannot ask His forgiveness because I have done so much sin. Let me tell you something. No greater sin have I committed. But God has forgiven me of everything. And I said to a man, you show me for which sin God holds me still accountable. And I will be the first to go back on my knees and say, God, forgive me. But he does ask you, sir, as a preacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, be holy as I am holy. When you don't have the strength, when you don't have the strength to get off your feet and onto your knees, then you ask God to help you. If that pride stands up in your way and you say, but I am the preacher, I don't need that help. I tell you something, that's when you need it most. That's when you need it most. I'm going to stop there. And then I'm going to ask you, just reach out if that's what you want. If that's what you want, reach out. Nehemiah rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem and he didn't go looking for new foundations. He dug deep to look for the old foundations, the solid rock which it was founded on and built upon because that was where God had built it originally. In the beginning, it was not so. Let us pray. Father, I come to you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray your Holy Spirit would just anoint, bless, and uplift that soul. Uplift those people, my God, that call out to you and draw them back. For time is of the essence, my God. And we thank you in Jesus' name. It is done. It is finished. It is finished in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.